The classic days of Nintendo 64 platformers. I kinda wish there was games this style today, but today we're talking about the sequel to Banjo-Kazooie. This is Banjo-Tooie. Don't go away. So Banjo-Tooie is very interesting. From everything I've heard online, the majority of people prefer uh, the first game to the sequel, uh, but I do have a couple of friends uh, who are diehard fans of Banjo Tooie. So, what what was my experience? What, what was my thoughts here? Um, well, let's delve into that. So, for starters, I just want to say for any game developers out there, this is the perfect way to start a sequel. You boot it up; it's basically a continuation of the story. There's no like year gap or anything. It is very easy to follow. The tutorial is just as good as last time. All the moves you learned in the first game, you already know here, and it asks you if you need to relearn them. But I recently played Kazooie, so I already knew them all. So you don't have to spend all that time relearning moves that you already knew, which is I was expecting. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to relearn that long jump or long jump. I'm gonna have to relearn how to like high jump and, and all this stuff. But no, all the moves you learn here are brand new. The intro cutscene gets right to the point and gets you right into the story. And it's not even like a crap story. It's just Gruntilda came back and gotta kill Gruntilda. <laughs> I did mention new things, so what, what kind of new things you got? Well, for starters, you got new types of ammo. In the first Banjo game, you only had one type of ammo, but in this one, you have five. You have the normal ammo, you have fire ammo, ice ammo, grenade ammo, and my personal favorite was like the bomb ammo, where you get to shoot it out and control a little bird. <laughs> Also new to the game was a aiming system, which was so desperately needed in the first game. You have a bunch of new moves like the drill beak and being able to split up Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, and they have their own moves separately to that. And of course you have new equipment and you had the speed boost and you had like the, the swamp boots. But now you also have, uh, I guess, suction cup and super high springy jump. So as far as improving the mechanical gameplay of Banjo from 1 to 2, I was really impressed here. Now the first level was really good, and it is in fact my favorite level. I felt like it was the perfect size for a platformer. You get into two things that become my favorite part of Banjo-Tooie, and I don't think it's close. The mini-games. One of the mini-games is you pretty much play Goldeneye, or Perfect Dark. It is rare who made Banjo 1 and 2, so they're, they're just pretty much copying everything they got from Goldeneye and Perfect Dark over here. Um, but that was like a genre switch up that was pretty freaking awesome. And the other notable minigame was, uh, you get to do it twice, was the Kickball Championships. At first, I thought it was complete garbage because the way to win was you had to score in your own net. And the, the person with the most scores in their own net wins. So that was like the most boring one ever. But after you got into it, it changed up the rules, which was desperately needed. And it became the person with the most loses and the person with the least wins so that's when you started to get into like a little bit of defense a little bit of offense and as a huge uh, sport fan nhl um that was awesome like those were awesome I wish, I wish you could do like one of those per level to earn a jiggy but uh yeah you only got to do it twice as far as i know and uh yeah Now compared to the first game, the levels in Tui are massive. Absolutely massive. 
And this is what I don't like about Tui, which is unfortunate because it's like the main thing I don't like about Tui. The levels are absurdly big here, way too big for a Nintendo 64 platformer. And a lot of you might be saying, well, you get more content. Like, what are you complaining about? There's like extra levels. There's more to do. Uh, my, arg my argument has always been with more content. I only enjoy more content when the content is fun. And because the levels are so huge, the backtracking is egregious here because compared to the first game, Jiggies come very complicated and hard to get. Uh, after you get past like the first, second, maybe third level, fourth level, once you get to like Grunty Industries and, and, and so on, it's horrendous in my opinion. I dropped my pen. The biggest example I could share is, is in Pterodactyl Land. You have to, in order to get to the big T-Rex, you have to first run to Mumbo shop, right? Transform into Mumbo. Run over to like the Wumbo Wigwam thing. Transform the tent into a big tent. Run back to Mumbo's hut. Transform back in Banjo-Kazooie. Then run over then turn into the T-Rex, and then you go do stuff with the T-Rex. And that's a considerable amount of time. I think this game needed some sort of way to just easily switch back to Banjo-Kazooie with Mumbo, or with the transformation thing, because having to go all the way back to the original spot, I didn't like in the first game, but I tolerate it because, I mean, the levels were pretty small. But here, it's like, you have to go quite a ways. And an interesting choice was to not buff the speed of Banjo or Kazooie, uh, which I found weird because levels are just like three to four times bigger and they have the same speed they did in the first game. Another major factor why I didn't like the levels here was the design is just borderline confusing and just so befuddled. Boy, how do I explain this? Uh... It's no longer just an open space like it was in Kazooie and you spawn and you go, huh, I could explore here or maybe I should go right to this turtle thing or, or forward. It's you spawn in and there's lots of doors, lots of inside areas, huge amount of cave ex exits and entrances and levels that are interconnected and this game really, really needed a map badly. I remember playing Grunty Industries and I was about 40 minutes in and I didn't even see a Jiggy yet because Grunty Industries is very linear in how you progress and it's a five story with an outside area spot and you can only get through certain areas at certain points and it's very confusing like that. So I was like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to use a guide. Using a guide, like the most, like, word by word, pause in the game and everything, efficient way i did everything the most efficient way possible word by word like the absolute efficient it took me four hours to get eight jiggies because the jiggies are so intricate in this game it's just i i you know people might be a fan of that i just found like i just was missing kazooie the first game pulling away from some of my critiques about this game i would have to say the uh transformation stuff in this game uh was good um, I felt like it was uh, better. You could attack back, which was a huge bonus. And also, one of my main gripes about the first game was that there was no bosses. So that little, you know, that last punch of a level was never there. There's bosses in this game, and their design and everything about them is perfect, in my opinion. So for presentation, I think this might be a really short category because I think I've said everything about the presentation in the, in the first review I did for Banjo-Kazooie. Everything about the first game that I loved is still here, and it's to be expected. You know, it's a Nintendo 64 rare game platformer. The music, positively great. Uh, I wish more games focused on music in the modern day, but you know, whatever. The look of this game I've always loved. If you want to say, oh, it's not 1080p 4K graphics. I've never one been one to, uh, you know, go crazy over graphics. The boss design is great. I did have a few frame drops, actually quite a bit of frame drops, uh, once you got into the later levels because there's just so much, like, there's so big levels. So I, I came into this game expecting a 9 or 10 out of 10 for presentation, and everything that I expected delivered, and that's pretty good because the expectations I had were pretty damn high. Uh, one of the funny things I found, though, uh, was Banjo's voice was completely changed. Uh, I might go back and check this in Kazooie, but they gave him like a super deep Chad voice here in Banjo Tooie. So for overall impact, I think this game is better than what I'm giving it credit for. 
uh, but from my experience I had, this was just frustrating above all. I did not really enjoy banjo Tui. As soon as I got to Grunty Industries was when my frustration started. The first like 30% of this game, I was so hyped. The mini games, you know, getting jiggies, the transformations, it was looking to be a really promising game. Interconnected levels was really good until I realized that a lot of the jiggies I could see and couldn't get that I spent like half an hour on, 40 minutes. Oh, it, the game doesn't tell you, but you don't have that move until like two levels from now, and then you can come back to this level and get that jiggy. I like the interconnectivity of the levels, but not when it's restricting you from 100% level when you unlock it. Like if I unlock that level, I expect to go in, get as many jiggies, hopefully 10 out of 10 jiggies, and move on. But I spent so much time on jiggies that I realized I just couldn't open that door. I was like looking for a switch or something to shoot at, and it's like, oh, uh, I just don't know how to tell the prophecy future that I'm going to unlock a move that'll drill screws out of the ground. The jiggies are a lot blander to get in my opinion. A lot of it has to do with clicking a button, running across the entire open map, hopefully not dying or something, getting the jiggy, and then pretty much doing the same thing. Like Pterodactyl Land, you have to sit on the dinosaur egg, or dinosaur eggs. That is a dinosaur. You have to sit on the eggs, right? All that requires you to do is run across the entire map six, or, like five or six times, sit on an egg and run across the map again. And in Banjo Kazooie, I remember there being a huge ton of variety with the jiggies. And I just had no idea what to do. Um, you know, I don't want to say I needed a quest tracker or there should have been something like that in the game. But maybe there should have been. Like, I had no problem with Kazooie. And I had no problem with the first couple levels here. But once it just got to the point where the levels were so big. Like, oh, go collect these uh, five things with the washing machine and clean their sh sh stuff. It's like... This is a huge ass level and a lot of it's restricted and stuff you can only enter and exit with transforming which takes a lot of walking around and it's just like you know I spent 80% of my time wandering around going the wrong way. I really really wanted to enjoy this game it, but in the end it just Banjo Tooie makes me appreciate Banjo Kazooie just that much more. My biggest gripe with Banjo Kazooie the first one was that everything reset when you die. That was fixed in Banjo Tooie. So when that I discovered that, that was like the biggest plus possible. So I will give a huge props to Tooie for that. And I will give a huge props to genre switching because I still think like that is literally one of the coolest things I see in games is when you just completely switch genres. It reminds me of what remains of Edith Finch where you can just randomly do stuff or it takes two. Banjo Tooie just does really interesting stuff uh, in the first couple levels. And uh, it just gets to the point where it's frustrating and later on. So, with all that being said, the overall score is 7.5 out of 10. So that's it. Uh, I didn't enjoy Banjo Chewy as much as I was hoping uh, to do, but uh, that is it. I don't plan on playing Nuts and Bolts. Uh, I believe that's the third Banjo game. It's like I remember it's like a racing car one. I remember my friend talking about about it. And uh, I just don't have a way to play that. I don't have an Xbox or whatever console is released on. So that's it for Banjo for now. But that is not it for Rare Games. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go try DK64 and uh, Conquerors. I'm going to take a break though because all these games are sort of really similar. I don't want to like get too crazed down on platformer Rare Games. Um, but uh, I do want to have like a modern like now point of view. Because I played DK64 when I was a kid and I'm probably blinded by bias. So what would my, my thoughts be now? And also Conquerors Bedford. I would love to look at the four main platformer rare games of Banjo, uh, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Conquerors Bedford Day, and DK64, and really, you know, kind of break that down and maybe do a rank list or something. But for now, I'm your host, Save Planet Entertainment, and we just review. Peace out. <laughs>